Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina sought cooperation from Australia to boost agriculture production as Australia has technological expertise in this sector. She said Bangladesh has achieved a marked progress in agriculture production by a manifold increase during the last 15 years, but Australia can help Bangladesh boost its production further. The Premier said this while Australian Foreign Minister Senator Penny Wong paid a courtesy call on her at Gonabhavan this afternoon. While briefing, speechwriter to the Prime Minister M. Nozrul Islam said, during the call-on, both discussed various issues relating to mutual interests, including agriculture, education and trade. They put emphasis on increasing communication and partnership between the countries on these issues, he said. Talking about climate issue, the Premier said, the developed countries are just making their commitments but not fulfilling those on climate issues. Sheikh Hasina said that the government is setting up 100 economic zones across the country. Australian entrepreneurs can invest there and make their profit, availing the investment-friendly facilities of the country, she said. Talking about Rohingya and Palestine issues, the Prime Minister said that Bangladesh is against any sort of war or conflict. Advisor to the Prime Minister, Salman Fozlu Rahman, Ambassador at Large, Imziauddin, and Principal Secretary, Mohammad Tofasul Hussein Mia, were among others present at the meeting. As many as 156 upazelas across the country went into voting today. It was the second phase voting in the upazela polls. The voting began at 8 in the morning and continued uninterruptedly till 4 in the afternoon. Voters in 24 upazelas exercised their franchises through electronic voting machine EVM while voting was held at ballot papers in the rest 132 upazelas. Considering the law and order situation, additional members of the BGB, RAB and Coast Guard were deployed in 16 upazelas. A total of 1,824 persons are competing in the second phase of the upazela elections. Of them, 603 are fighting for the post of chairman, 693 for vice chairman and 528 are competing for women vice chairman posts. The number of voters were 3 crore and 52 lakh. Today was a general holiday in the Upazelas that went into elections. Chief Election Commissioner Kazi Habibullah Awal said the voting was overall peaceful in 156 Upazelas in the second phase of the Upazela Parishad elections. He said this while speaking to the media after polling at Nirbachon Bhabun in the afternoon today. Four other election commissioners were present. The CEC said law enforcement agencies intervened immediately wherever attempts of ballot stuffing was made. 25 people were arrested with 10 of them jailed immediately, CEC added. Meanwhile, Wamle General Secretary and Road Transport and Bridges Minister Wadil Kadir said the second phase of Upazela Porsche the election was held peacefully. He said this while addressing a press conference on post-election reaction at Wamle President's political office at Dhanmundi in the capital today. Duda Porjae Nirbaton Wait, Puno Casual Tini, Proton Porjaioni, E Porjaioni, Election Santipun Wait, Tano Motabri Santojano, a Tuluna Mulakan Poltechai, the Roktopatra, being Piramole Puno, Stanio Sorkan Nibato, E de Shehoi. নির্বাচনের বিরুদ্ধে আমাদের দেশে বিএনপি সদাদের সমমনাদের অবিরাম মিথ্যাচার মানুষের মধ্যে বিভ্রান্তির সৃষ্টি করে টিআইবি এর অপপ্রচার আছে আর কিছু নামিদামি বুদ্ধিজীবী আছেন তারাও নির্বাচন সম্পর্ক অপপ্রচার করেছে মিথ্যাচার করেছে মানুষের আগ্রহ নষ্ট করার Mentioning the lies of BNP leaders regarding Bakshal, Ubadul Qadir said there is evidence that Zia Rahman became a member of Bakshal by appealing to Bongabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. For Pul Shaibra, the Tomitra Chari Guru, Tatu Pramantuas. তখন সেনা প্রধানের বাংলাদেশ কৃষক শ্রমিক লীগের আওয়াম লীগের সদস্য হওয়ার বিধান ছিল কিন্তু জিয়াউর রহমান বিশেষ ভাবে বঙ্গবন্ধুর কাছে আবেদন করে 
সদস্যপদ লাভ করেছিলেন আমি এটা চ্যালেঞ্জ করছি এর সত্যতা তত্ত্বপত্র আছে সত্যকে বিকৃত করে লাভ নেই তখনকার পত্র পত্রিকাগুলো দেখুন বাকশালের যে কমিটি কমিটি সেভেন্টি ওয়ানে তার নামটি ছিল আমি ফকরুল সাহেবকে আবারও চ্যালেঞ্জ করছি যে মিথ্যাচার করে লাভ Joint General Secretaries of Awami League, Mahbubul Alam Hanif and AFM Bahauddin Nasim, Organizing Secretaries BM Mozammal Haq, SM Kamal Hussain, Mirza Azam and Shujit Roy were also present at the press conference. Australia will continue duty-free, quota-free facilities for Bangladeshi products even after its graduation from LDC to middle-income country. This was disclosed in a joint briefing after meeting between Foreign Minister Dr. Hassan Mahmood and his Australian counterpart Penny Wong at the State Guest House Podda today. Bangladesh High Commissioner to Australia M. Allama Siddiqui and Acting Australian High Commissioner in Dhaka Nadia Simpson were present on the occasion. Dr. Hassan Mahmood said the meeting discussed the export of skilled manpower from Bangladesh, Australian investment in 100 special economic zones and 40 IT villages, increasing maritime cooperation, employment generation of Bangladeshis, cooperation in energy and environment protection. We have talked about many issues and I have uh, asked Honorable Dick Penny on the Foreign Minister for their continued support because we are going to be graduated by 2026 from LDC to developing country. And we are now enjoying quota fee, duty fee access in the Australian market. And I am very thankful Honorable Foreign Minister has said this will continue though we are going to graduate from our to developing country. Uh, and we are deepening our economic relationship uh, as the Foreign Minister has announced. Uh, and I'm very pleased today uh, to just confirm uh, that Australia will provide additional funding for technical education co training colleges. We will provide additional funding to Austrade, uh, the Australian Trade uh, Agency, to deliver deeper economic engagement uh, we will provide additional economic uh, assistance to support your economic reforms, to support your graduation. Bodhu Purnima, the largest religious festival of the Buddhist community, will be celebrated tomorrow across the country. Bodhu Purnima marks the birth of Prince Siddharth Gautam, known later as Gautam Buddha, the founder of Buddhism. The day is a public holiday. The celebrations usually start with lighting of lamps and hoisting of the national and religious flags atop the Mohabihar and chanting of sacred verses from Tripitaka. The Buddhist devotees are expected to offer various gift items including fruits, flowers and candles to statues of Lord Bodho throughout the day. President Muhammad Shahbuddin will accord a reception to Buddhist community leaders at the Credential Hall of Bangabundu tomorrow. Meanwhile, on the occasion of the Bodhu Purnima, President Muhammad Shahbuddin and Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in separate messages greeted the members of the Buddhist community as well as the countrymen. In his message, President Shahbuddin said Bodhu disseminated the message of equity and friendship during his entire life to establish peace and harmony in the world. He said ideals and philosophy of Bodho can play an important role in establishing peace in society, removing unrest and intolerance from the world and saving people from moral degradation. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in her message said, overcoming greed, hatred and lust, Gautam Bodho preached the messages of non-violence, friendship and compassion throughout his life for the peace, harmony and welfare of mankind. The average per capita income of people in Bangladesh has increased. According to the latest calculation of Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics, BBS, now the per capita income has stood at $2,784. This is a provisional count of the current fiscal year. The per capita income has been calculated on the exchange rate of $1 at 109 taka and 97 paisa. So the yearly average per capita income has stood at 3,6144 taka. 
The per capita income was $2,749 in the last fiscal year and it is up by $35 in one year. Meanwhile, based on a temporary calculation, the BBS said that the current fiscal year's gross domestic product GDP growth will stand at 5.82%. Moving on to international news. Funeral rites have begun for Iran's president and seven others who died in a helicopter crash. In Tabriz, thousands of people gathered on the streets to mourn President Raisi. The funeral procession is now moving to Qom, considered the second most sacred city in Iran after Mashhad. Raisi's body is expected to be buried in his birthplace, Mashhad, on yet Thursday. Meanwhile, Iran's government has decided that the country's 14th presidential election will be held at June 28, the media reported. The election date was fixed in a meeting attended by Iran's first vice president, Mohammad Mokber, currently assuming the presidency, Judiciary Chief Golam Hussein Mohsini Ejeji and Parliament Speaker Mohammad Bakir Kalibaf. During the meeting, the participants also set the schedule for the election processes, including the formation of executive delegations, the registration of candidates and the launch of electoral campaigns, according to Irna. Meanwhile, Chief of Staff of the Iranian Armed Forces, Major General Mohammad Baghiri, has assigned a high-ranking delegation to investigate into the case of the helicopter crash in which President Ibrahim Raisi and his accompanying team were murdered. Meanwhile, one-day state mourning will be observed in Bangladesh on Thursday next at the death of Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi. A cabinet division notification issued today said on the day the national flag will remain at half-mast atop all government, semi-government and autonomous organizations and educational institutions, all government and private buildings and Bangladesh missions abroad. Special prayers will be held at all mosques and other religion institutions on the day, seeking eternal peace of the departed souls of those who died in the helicopter crash in Iran. U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller said the International Criminal Court ICC arrest warrants for Israeli and Hamas leaders could jeopardize ceasefire hostage release efforts. U.S. President Joe Biden called in a written statement the ICC warrant for Israeli leaders outrageous. The prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, Karim A. Khan, has also announced arrest warrants against Hamas leadership over war crimes. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has angrily condemned the International Criminal Court's prosecutor for seeking arrest warrants for him alongside Hamas's leaders over alleged war crimes in the Gaza conflict. Mr. Netanyahu said he rejected with disgust that democratic Israel had been compared with that what he called mass murderers. The ISIS is also seeking a warrant for Hamas's leader in Gaza, Yahya, seen war for war crimes. Medical sources said that a drone attack targeted the Yibna refugee camp in Rafah in southern Gaza, killing at least three children. Gaza's health ministry says 85 people have been killed and 200 injured in the latest 24-hour reporting period. At least seven people, including a teacher and a doctor, have been killed in an Israeli army raid on Jenin in the occupied West Bank, the Palestinian health ministry says. The UN's humanitarian office says that 40% of Gaza's population, or more than 9 lakh people, have been forcibly displaced in the last two weeks. At least 35,647 people have been killed and 79,852 wounded in Israeli attacks on Gaza since October 7. Meanwhile, UN Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, Tor Wensland, on Monday called for the resumption of negotiations between Israel and Hamas. One person has died likely due to a heart attack and several others were injured when a Singapore Airlines flight from London to Singapore was hit by severe turbulence. The Boeing 777-300ER was diverted to Suvarnabhumi Airport in Bangkok, Thailand, where it made an emergency landing at 3.45 p.m. local time today. Singapore Airlines said flights SQ321 encountered several turbulence en route. Four hours after the emergency landing, 18 people remained hospitalized while another 12 were being treated on an outpatient basis. 
The remaining passengers and crew are being examined and given treatment where necessary. Now news on weather. Met Office in his weather forecast till 6 p.m. tomorrow said rain or thunder showers accompanied by temporary gusty or squally wind is likely to occur at a few places over Rongpur and Ratshay divisions and at one or two places over Dhaka, Maiman Singh, Khulna and Chattogram divisions. Night temperature may rise slightly and day temperature may remain nearly unchanged over the country, said the Met Office. Moving on to news on sports. Bangladesh is now batting against the USA in the first T20 of three match series in Texas. The Tigers scored 71 runs for four wickets in 12 overs when report last came in. Earlier, USA won the toss and sent Bangladesh to bat first. To end the bulletin, headlines once again. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina seeks cooperation from Australia to boost agriculture production as Australian Foreign Minister calls on her. Counting of vote is in progress following second phase of Upozela Porshad elections in 156 Upozelas across the country. Second phase of Upozela Porshad election held peacefully, says Obadul Kader. Australia will continue duty free, quota free access for Bangladeshi products even after the latter's graduation from LDC to middle income countries, says Dr. Hassan Mahmoud. Bodh Purnima tomorrow, President and Prime Minister greet country's Buddhist community. Iran will hold presidential election on June 28. Funeral rides get underway for President Ibrahim Raisi, who died in a helicopter crash. Bangladesh declares a day of mourning on 23rd May. And the first T20 of three match series between Bangladesh and USA is in progress at Houston in Texas. That's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for staying with us and invite you to watch our 11.30 Bangla News. Until then, Kuda Hafiz.